Ah, uh, out of stock. Bummer. What, you guys too? Aw, oh, man. eBay to the rescue. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, that means there's only one other option. I guess we'll see what you've got. Remember, I don't serve sense. Supplies are just for humans. Sure, let's take a look. Odds and ends. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, an Apple Lisa. Huh, interesting. Petsky robots for the Pip Boy. Wow, they got ported everything, didn't it? X16 on sale by 2287. Ah, a classic and one of my favorites. No, oh, I guess not as rare as we thought. Oh yeah, definitely essential reading here. Oh my God, it freaking works! Ah, oh, great book. Oh, another essential, a computer repair kit. It's Rammy. Okay, okay, I need to get some shopping done. Uh, wait a minute, no. No, no, that's not why I'm here. 74 Series ICs, check. Xilinx CPLDs, yep. My PCB orders here, okay. Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, what? 1700 caps? Wow, this transaction's over. Looks like it's time to negotiate the price. What, you lost? I ain't a tour guide. Oh, I do hope you're here to make a purchase. Hello everyone, Kevin from TechSelect here, and today I would like to introduce an updated product as well as three new releases for the PC Junior. First, I'd like to discuss the newly updated Junior IDE Revision B. As of the release of this video, some parts are either scarce or out of stock for more than a year. One of the CPLDs on the Junior IDE was unavailable for a very long time, so we took this opportunity to redesign it and make a few changes. The original card had a power on self test display. And while this may be useful for diagnosing a faulty PC Junior, it does mostly go unused and unseen, especially when mounted inside of a sidecar enclosure. The real-time clock is now using a DS12885 instead of the original DS12887. The DS12887 had an integrated battery and no easy way to replace it. The 12885 requires an external battery, which means it can be easily replaced by the user when needed. The original Junior IDE could not use a standard right-angle box-style connector with a key for an IDE cable or an adapter. With the redesign, I flipped the pins around so the standard box header could be used. We converted many parts to surface mount and removed all of the sockets from the ICs. The IC sockets were removed to help keep the parts on the Junior IDE as low profile as possible. We needed this for the second change, which is an expansion port to add an option card. The most expensive part on the Junior IDE by far is the sidecar connector. So this allows for a lower cost method of adding another expansion card. We also added a capacitor next to the power on IDE pin 20. This helps more power hungry compact flashcards behave correctly. And well, we can't have an expansion port without having an expansion card. So we created the ReSound Junior OPL3 card. It's a fully functional ad lib clone, which will work with many popular DOS games. It has a built-in line level 3.5 millimeter audio jack and an optional three pin header if you want to mount a jack on the back of your sidecar. Later in the video, I'll show a demo of a few ad-lib games in action on the PC Junior. I know what a lot of you are thinking. Hey, I already bought a Junior IDE and I don't have one of them fancy expansion ports. Well, how am I supposed to plug in this OPL3 card? Not to worry. I knew that there might be a few people out there who would want to buy a ReSound Junior. So instead of designing two boards, we opted to build a prototype PCB with the expansion header built in. This will allow you to not only add any expansion cards designed for our expansion slot now and in the future, but it will also allow you to prototype designs of your own. It comes with a sidecar connector pre-installed, so you only have to add the sound card or any future expansion board if you don't want to use it for prototyping. The last product we are releasing is the Tandy mod for the PC Junior. 
This board replaces a single IC on the PC Junior motherboard and is designed to remap the graphics memory to be compatible with the Tandy 1000. I'm sure that most folks out there are aware that the Tandy 1000 was originally a clone of the PC Junior. Tandy had originally thought that the PC Junior would be more popular than it proved to be. Even though the PC Junior didn't have a long run, the Tandy 1000 actually lived on for many years, and many games designed specifically to run on the Tandy can be run on the PC Junior as well. Tandy did, however, make a few changes to the system. One area was the way video memory architecture was structured. Whether or not it was a bug or intentional, the PC Junior makes accessing the entire 32K area of video memory more difficult than it usually is. Tandy made it far more linear and easier to use. Games must be written in a special way to run on the PC Junior for some video modes. So in a nutshell, the Tandy mod makes your PC Junior more compatible with more games. All of these products are available for sale now on our website, techselect.com. Go check them out if you're interested. The next section of this video will show the installation of the Tandy mod chip. Unfortunately, it does require the removal of an IC from your PC Junior motherboard to perform this upgrade. The traces and pads are very delicate and easy to remove from the PCB, as you'll see in a moment. If you're not experienced with soldering, I would recommend getting some help with the installation. Most PC Juniors have clips which hold the motherboard in, but as you can see, the clips are broken in my machine. But if yours still has the clips, be careful because they're usually very brittle. First locate the proper IC and make a mark on it somehow so you remember which one it is. Sometimes to remove old solder, it's better to add new solder first to make the process easier. After you finish desoldering, it's time to try to remove it. However, if the chip resists any at all, it may not be ready yet. You just have to add more solder and try it again. And this is why you have to be careful. As you can see, even after soldering it and desoldering it twice, I still managed to leave a little bit on the leg. The camera wasn't really helping my situation, but when you're working on this, be very careful. In my case, the wire was easy to trace, so I just opted to use a bodge wire on the bottom of the board. After desoldering, clean the bottom of the board with some alcohol. Install the new socket, then flip the board over and begin soldering the socket in. And if you're careful, the optional bodge wire can be skipped.
The blue jumper on the Tandy mod is used to switch between Tandy mode and PC Junior mode. By default, it's set to Tandy mode, but you could put a switch on the back of the machine if you have an application which requires you to change it. And now you're ready to reassemble the machine.
It's Rammy.